Hey everybody and welcome to today's episode which was filmed on the 26th of May 2023. Now as I'm sure a lot of you are aware Microsoft Build, the developer focused conference by Microsoft has been running this week. It's been mostly in person but there has been online events streamed and all of the keynotes were streamed live and are available on demand and a lot of the sessions are now available on demand as well. So if you haven't caught it then there is a chance to go back and watch some of these sessions. But with this conference has come a whole host of announcements from various different product teams in various different areas. I think we've seen um, across the whole board, Azure, M365, Windows, there's been tons of announcements. So what I've done is actually focused on some of the ones that I've um, found quite interesting and want to share that with you. So there's a lot to get through, so let's dive in. So in public preview, we have a feature called Soft Delete for recovery points for Azure Backup. So this will allow you to recover data from recovery points that might have been deleted as a result of making changes to a backup policy associated with a backup item. Now this is available in selected regions right now, but will be rolling out to more regions in the next couple of weeks. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find out which regions it's available in right now, um, but um, have a check of your Azure portal and see if it's available within your setup in the region that you're using. But hopefully we'll start to see it roll out across all of the Azure regions. Um, this is in public preview. So again, obviously with a public preview, there's caveats around that. Generally available though, we have a new feature for Azure static web apps called linked backends. So this allows you to link your APIs to your static web apps and API requests are automatically routed to the linked API. So it's going to support Azure Functions, Azure App Service, Azure Container App and Azure API management backends. So with this linked backend, what you're getting is integrated security with direct access to user authentication and role-based authorization data, plus seamlessly routing that makes the API route available to the front end web app without custom cross origin resource sharing rules or cores rules. Um, so yeah, that's a generally available feature for Azure static web apps. Sticking to the generally available features, we've got one around Azure Functions. So if you're linking Azure SQL and Azure Functions together, this new generally available feature called SQL Bindings for Azure Functions is out. And this will help you reduce the amount of code that you have to write to link the two together. So you can write these SQL input and output bindings in .NET, Java, Python, Node.js and PowerShell Azure functions. So hopefully this is going to be a great feature to help you reduce the amount of code you need to write if you're trying to link your Azure functions and Azure SQL together. So moving back to a public preview feature, we now have GitHub Advanced Security for Azure DevOps. So you can start to use the code scanning, the secret scanning, the dependency scanning capabilities that we've seen within GitHub now within your Azure DevOps environment. So this feature really allows you to implement your security earlier inside your software development lifecycle and hopefully fix any security issues and identify them before your code hits production. Um, so yeah, a nice one to have if you're using Azure DevOps. We can take that advanced security from GitHub and use it in that environment. Now, as we all know, cost is something that we are focusing on. Everybody, I think, is talking about reducing costs. And one of the ways we reduce costs within Azure is using Azure reservations. And that's when you commit to a type of reservation, a type of, of service within Azure for either a year or a three-year plan. And that can help you actually um, reduce the amount that that feature um, costs. What we're seeing though sometimes is that customers buy the reservations and they go underutilized um, or unutilized completely, which really negates the point of, in, of investing in these three year or one year plan of reservations. Now you can view inside the portal, the utilization percentage, but let's face it, sometimes we're far too busy to go and check that portal or we miss that information. What we now have available is an alert that you can configure so that you get a notification if your reservations are unutilized or underutilized. Now this is a preview feature um, at the moment, but I think given the nature of this preview feature, I would be happy for people to actually use it and to roll it out into production environments. But hopefully the alert will help you understand what's happening with your reservations and give you time to action them and make the most of your savings um, within those Azure reservations that you've purchased. 
Now sticking with the cost management theme, we've had an announcement that Azure Cost Management is getting an injection or an integration of AI technology inside it. So these next generation AI capabilities will help you understand, analyze and manage your cloud costs and bills. This feature is coming to the Azure portal soon. Um, you can sign up for a wait list to, to get it enabled for you. So what I'll do is put it in the show notes or the, the comment section, wherever you're watching or listening to this episode. Um, and you can sign up to that if you want to dive into that. So that's gonna be pretty cool and I'm excited to see what that actually enables for us. So another public preview feature that I think is very cool and very topical with a lot of the customers that I'm talking about with is the Azure API Center. Um, so it's going to be a central hub for you to discover, track and manage all the APIs in your organization. So it will enable you to build up the kind of company-wise API standards. So set the kind of standards that you want for your APIs. It will also allow your developers to quickly discover and consume APIs that can be reused to help accelerate or even enable development within your environment. You'll be able to track the APIs with the API inventory functionality. You'll be able to see version information, specifications, deployments, metadata meta schema information. Plus, you'll have management administration access to APIs and other assets with the role-based access control. To gain access to this, you actually have to register inside the Azure portal for it to be enabled into your subscription. And the team are hoping to give access to people in June. So again, check out the show notes and I'll share some information about how you can actually register for that as well. Now back to generally available, um, we've seen Microsoft launch Azure Linux. So they've launched their own version of Linux. And this is for a container host with for use with Azure Kubernetes service. And it's really optimized for performance on Azure. Some of you may be familiar with this under its project code name because it was called CBL Mariner. And I think we announced it at Ignite last year in October. So yeah, it's very cool to see that go generally available. Now, sticking again with some generally available announcements, Microsoft DevBox will be going generally available in July 2023. Um, and again, I think this was announced at Ignite last year and there was a lot of interest around it. Um, with the general available feature, I believe we're going to get some more capabilities in the public preview area of it though. Um, and the first one being new starter images in the marketplace, um, which will help you get, get ready and, and get using um, DevBox. Plus, we'll also have the ability to customise your dev box using configuration as code files in Git source control environments. So exciting things around dev box and, uh, and hopefully we'll get to dive into that more um, as they become available. GitHub Copilot was the world's first at scale generative AI tool made with OpenAI's CodeX model. Now the GitHub team have been working on a new iteration and that's going to be called GitHub Copilot X. And that'll be utilising the GPT-4 model. And with this GitHub Copilot X, they're introducing chat and voice for Copilot, plus bringing Copilot to your pull requests, the command line and the docs to help answer your questions. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and I've signed up for the wait list for that. So head over and do that as well to have that enabled for your environment. Pretty cool to see where that's going to go and how that's going to help us within our development and GitHub environments. So an announcement I saw a lot of my data focused colleagues talk about and post about is Microsoft Fabric. So this is an end to end unified analytics platform that brings together all the data and analytics tools such as Azure Data Factory, Azure Synapse Ana Analytics and Power BI. With Fabric, you get a unified experience and architecture that provides all the capabilities required for you to extract insights from your data and present it to your business user. Fabric is also going to have Azure OpenAI service infused within it. So this is very exciting to see. It's not an area that I cover and I focus on. So it'll be interesting to see the use cases for this and how this actually evolves. But definitely the data focused colleagues that I work with are very excited about this one. So moving away from the Azure environment, I want to cover off some of the announcements we've had around Windows 11. And the most exciting one I've seen is around a feature called Dev Home. So this is going to be a new control center, a new experience for you that will help you monitor and manage and interact with your projects um, in the development world. So say for example, you have 
uh, are a brand new employee to a company and you are asked to work on a project that lives inside a GitHub repository. Now you've got a brand new machine and you've got a task that you have to interact with GitHub um, repositories. So normally we would spend probably a day or two trying to install all of the different bits of software and the versions and there are specific versions that we need to be able to work with that project. What Dev Home is going to allow you to do is connect the two and make it all almost an automated experience for you. So it'll help you set up your development environment. So downloading the apps, the packages, the repositories that you need onto your machine to enable that kind of quick development. And then if you're managing multiple projects, then Dev Home will be able to help you actually manage that. It'll give you a control panel, a dashboard where you can monitor what's happening with those various different GitHub or, or, or other repositories as well. So this is pretty cool in terms of enabling that fast innovation, that fast integration for maybe new employees or people new to projects. Because let's face it, we have all wasted days at a time trying to mimic our, our, our laptops to someone else's laptop so that the code will work on it. So this is very cool to see. Some other cool Windows 11 announcements that we've seen, we're going to get native support for more archive formats. So we'll soon be able to use RAW or TARG, GZ, um, etc. with inside um, Windows 11 natively, which is fantastic. Um, you'll also be able to force quit apps straight from your taskbar. Again, another handy feature. And we're going to see Windows Terminal actually get integration with GitHub Copilot X as well. So there's lots coming on the horizon for Windows 11. Now, folks, I've only covered a fraction of the announcements that happened at Microsoft Build this week, and there'll be tons more that I haven't co covered at all. However, there's a great um, book that has been released as part of Build, and I'm sure many of you are aware of it, the Book of News. And I'll post a link in the show notes or the comments for you to have a look at. Um, but it covers off more of the announcements and more detail of the announcements that I had, did mention. So hopefully you've enjoyed this um, video. Um, do hit that subscribe button. Do hit that like button. Share it with your colleagues. And hopefully I'll catch you in another one, folks. Cheers. <music>